What's up guys? Welcome back to the Real Michigan YouTube channel. Got something a little different for you guys today. Uh, here you're looking at a 1979 Glastron Sportster I recently purchased off Facebook Marketplace. Uh, got a pretty good deal on it. It's got a 70 horsepower Mercury uh, front mount trolling motor, power tilt, decent trailer, tilt trailer. Uh, a couple days after I got it though, I discovered this. Ransom was completely rotted on it. That's what we're dealing with. Goes all the way up to the corner, all the way to that corner. God. Move the uh, so-called floorboard that was there to discover this. This cavity here is actually between the layers of the boat. There's no no drainage into the bilge area, uh, so this water is just completely trapped, basically. Yeah, we'll be able to get that out of there easy. It's my buddy Tom. We're going to use his tractor to uh, get this motor off here and get it on this homemade engine stand we built out of 2 by 4s A little bit closer look at the motor, kind of the condition it's in. The Mercury 70 horse, Mercury 700, 70 horse, 3 cylinder, 2 uh, stroke. There's a couple corroded wires, but overall it seemed like it was in pretty good shape. I knew the impeller need replaced, but uh, we went ahead and did that. Just me just dis disassembling the main engine wiring so that we can uh, pull this engine off. I did drill a couple holes in this bilge area just to get this water out of the boat. As you can see, there's a what used to be a layer of plywood there with a layer of fiberglass over it, and it's just completely rotted out and broken away over the years. It's kind of a bad design. There's no no drainage into this little bilge area here from the in inside between the two layers of fiberglass so if any water gets into the front storage compartments or in any of the sides pretty much it's stuck there forever you can just lay it down the hydraulic pump pulled out lines were pretty much falling apart all the rubberizing on them So here we got to kind of wiggle the engine off to the side to get the steering um, steering linkage out of its housing. This is uh, kind of a pain.
my buddy Tom. Uh, get in there, just knock him loose all the all the nasty wood that's still in there. Everything that's loose, he's getting free. I start going to work with the oscillating tool, just trying to clear out anything that looks rotten or bad. We tried getting at the, we cut the top cap off the splash well, and uh, we were going to use a sawzall to just cut down both sides of it. That didn't really work out. We ended up going with a hammer and chisel and a spade bit. Um, that that did pretty good. We got the majority of it out with the spade bit, and then chipped all the extra out with the the hammer and chisel. So we got the whole transom out here. It's obviously still some remnants need to be sanded off. So uh, another YouTuber made their transom template with uh with popsicle sticks. I thought that was a pretty good idea, so I went ahead and did that. You can see there that top cap that we cut off to get access to that whole back of the transom. Uh, my transom was an uh, inch and a half, so we went with three quarter inch marine plywood, uh, two layers. The stuff that was in there was inch and a half thick and five layers of plywood. This is going to be inch and a half and 16 ply once it's uh, filled together. So here I got both those pieces cut, sanded down, lined up pretty decent. This is pretty much the majority of the transom. It just turned into mold. You can really, like when you slide this wood in, you can you, you'll really be able to tell like. Here I'm using the West Systems Epoxy. I'm uh, coating both these transom pieces, uh, letting it set up and get tacky, and then I'm gonna go ahead and clamp them together. I should say I have no experience with fiberglass, like whatsoever. Very limited woodworking experience, but. After watching hundreds of hours of transom repairs on YouTube, I thought this was something that it would be doable, and uh, it was. I was actually pleasantly surprised with how it came out. So here I'm just sanding down all those remnants, all the little pieces of wood that were still stuck on in epoxy. Get a good surface to bond to. Thank you. 
God damn. That's definitely going to be a mask situation. Here, I'm just trying to grind down that lip that was left in the build hole or build area uh, that was there originally. This is, I noticed a bunch of spider webbing on this back piece of fiberglass, the outer outer shell. Uh, so here I'm just sanding everything down, getting it clean, and then I put a piece of glass, that piece of glass I just cut, I put over the back. I didn't get it on camera, um, but I laid that down. You can see now, I gotta re-sand it. So I thought this was a good idea pre-cutting the holes um, for the transom. That did not turn out to be a great idea. Ended up having to re-drill re these holes about a quarter inch off from where they are currently. So this is all the tabbing, all the first layer of tabbing for the transom itself. Using West Systems Epoxy. So this is the front of the transom, so I'm only gonna epoxy half of this um, for now, cause I'll have access to it from the inside of the boat. Thought it would make it easier for handling purposes. Here I'm filling in voids and putting in the bottom track of glass just because there were some voids that needed filled in there. Putting some peanut butter in the sides and on the back. Drop the transom in. Uh, it actually started to set up uh, when I was putting the back filler on. So we had to kind of rush to drop that, drop that transom in, which led to it being a quarter inch off pretty much. But filled in everything with the peanut butter solution. Got the got the two layers of tabbing on here. Those washers ended up being stuck forever. I misdrilled a hole here. Put an extra an extra hole. Here I'm starting to piece back the the transom cap. It was warped pretty bad from I'm assuming being decayed for so many years. It was putting a lot of weight onto these pieces of fiberglass. Uh, I ended up cutting it into a few more pieces just so that I could get it as straight as possible. I could have also just made a new cap there, but I thought that was probably a little bit more work than uh, was necessary. So here we we jumped through a lot. I put two more layers on the rear. I put in this floor. I did two layers of glass on the floor, and then put in this floorboard and two layers of tabbing on it. And I'm now glassing in the whole thing. So we ended up with three layers of matting on the transom two layers on the floor, two layers of tabbing on the transom, two layers of tabbing on the floorboard, 
and then a single layer of glass on top of that lower board that, that covers that and the transom. And now we're just putting the engine back on. Uh, I didn't get much footage of hooking back up the hydraulic lines or bleeding them. Um, replace the fluid in that, bled those, replace the impeller, and they're on the water. Yeah, there's a few, uh, bugs out here tonight. <laughs> 